Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. Big show today. We're going to recap the Stanley Cup and the NBA playoffs, as well as the MLB games from yesterday. And look ahead to tonight's games in HL Sports, as well as the WNBA. We'll go over French Open results from yesterday. Look ahead to today's quarterfinal matches. We'll go over the latest news and notes. I'll do my 2020 NFL redraft. Um, getting into a little bit of something different. Um, New Jersey and Virginia are going to have primaries today. I want to get into that a little bit. Um, and then the fun rankings that I want to do. Masked singer slash dancer fame rankings. Like the most famous, from least famous to most famous list of the masked singer and masked dancer combined. And my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the Stanley Cup playoffs. Two games last night. We'll go over the results and look ahead to the games for tonight. Islanders over the Bruins 5-4 to to take a 3-2 series lead. Number three started game with a goal and assist. Brad Marshall, number two started game with two goals and assist. David Pasternak in the number one started game with a goal and assist. Josh Bailey. Canadians over the Jets 3-2 in overtime. On a goal by Tyler Toffoli to send the Canadians to the NHL's semifinals. That's different this year. It kind of feels like the conference finals, but um, nope. Montreal sweeps the Jets and is on to the Final Four. Number three star of the game with a goal. The Tory Lekkinen, the number two star of the game with two goals, Logan Stanley. And the number one star of the game with a goal and assist, Tyler Toffoli. All right. Two games tonight. 630 NBCSN. You have the Lightning and the Hurricanes. The Lightning are... Minus 126 favorites. Carolina's plus 108. Over under 5.5. Overs plus 110. Unders minus 134. Tampa minus 1.5 is plus 220. Carolina plus 1.5 is minus 275. I think the series will still go on. Let's go Carolina plus 108 at home to force a game 6. At 9 o'clock on NBCSN, the Golden Knights and the Avalanche. Colorado's minus 154. Vegas is plus 130. Over under 5.5. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 118. Vegas plus one half is minus two fifteen. Colorado minus one half is plus one seventy six. I'm gonna go with a different pick here. I'm gonna go Colorado regulation plus one hundred five. I think they're gonna bounce back and take a three two series lead. I still think Vegas wins the series, but I think this is gonna play out. Colorado Vegas Vegas or Vegas Colorado Vegas. So I'm gonna say Colorado wins one at home in regulation plus one hundred five at home in regulation against the Vegas. Golden Knights. All right, now move on to the NBA playoffs. We will go over yesterday's results and look ahead to the games from tonight. Nets over the Bucks, 125-86. They'll take a 2-0 series lead. Kevin Durant, 32 points and 6 assists. Giannis is at a combo, 18 points, 11 boards, 4 assists. What a disastrous game for the Bucks. Suns over the Nuggets, 122-105. to take a 1-0 series lead as I win best bet. Mikael Bridges, 23 points for the Suns. And Nikola Jokic, 22 points for Denver. All right, two games tonight. 7.30 TNT of the Hawks and the 76ers. Game two. I'm at Philly 7, total 223 and a half. Meanwhile, it is 6 and 224. Um... For the sake of the podcast, I'm not going to bet it, but I'm going to lay the six with the Sixers as I think they'll take a 2-0 series lead. Or, I'm sorry, um, even up the series at one apiece. I forgot Atlanta won game one. Oops. And 10 o'clock TNT have the Clippers and the Jazz game one. Um, before I make a pick for the game, make a pick for the series. Um, best player series is Kawhi, obviously. Um, been there, done that. Um. The Jazz have been fun all year. Rudy Gobert, John, Don, Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley, um, Bogdanovich, Ingles, Clarkson. Um, that's a good group. And then with the Clips, they have Kawhi, they have Paul George. They have some depth. Playoff Rondo starting to come around a little bit. Um, but because of... The star power and the been there, done that factor are Kawhi Leonard. I think he's healthy. I think that the Clippers win the series in six games. I will not be surprised whatsoever if the Jazz win the series. But to me, best player in the series always wins, and that to me is Kawhi Leonard. So 
Give me Clippers in six. And then in terms of tonight's game one, Jazz, I project as a four point favorite total to twenty one. Meanwhile, Jazz six now total to twenty three. Um despite what I already said about the Clippers, the Jazz I think will win game one. So I'm gonna lay the four with the Utah Jazz against the Clippers. Okay. Now I'll move on to Major League Baseball. We will go over the three games from last night and look ahead to a busier slate tonight. We only had three games yesterday, which is amazing. And one of them was a makeup game. Red Sox over to Marlins, 5-3. to three. Red Sox, 37-23. Miami, 25-34. Angels over to Royals, 8-3. to three. Angels, 28-32. KC, 29-29. And, and the Padres over to Cubs, 9-4. to four. The Padres, 37-25. Chicago, 33-27. and 27. All right. Like I said, on a lot of games tonight, 7 o'clock, you have the Braves and the Phillies. Drew Smiley and Aaron Nola. The Phillies are favored in this matchup at minus 178. Braves are plus 150 over under 8.5. Over is minus 104. Under is minus 118. Atlanta plus 1.5 is minus 138. Philly minus 1.5 is plus 115. Aaron Nola gets... The respect as he deserves it. Um, Drew Smiley's not that good. Um, I think this is going to be a, a Phillies offense breakout game. So going over 8.5 and, and minus 104. Dodgers Pirates. Walker Buehler and JT Brubaker. Dodgers minus 180. Pirates plus 152 over under 8. Overs minus 112. Unders minus 108. Dodgers minus 1.5 is minus 104. Pirates plus 1.5 is minus 115. I'm going Dodgers run line minus 1.5 and minus 104. Mets Orioles. David Peterson and Bruce Zimmerman. Yikes. Um, Mets are minus 120. Baltimore plus 102. Over on their nine. Over is minus 102. Under is minus 120. Mets minus 1F is plus 140. Baltimore plus 1F is minus 170. Going over nine, minus 102. Baltimore's offense has weirdly been a little better lately. Showing off against the Indians a little bit. Rockies, Marlins. Antonio Sensatella and Pablo Lopez. Marlins are minus 200. Rockies plus 168. Over under 7. Over is minus 122. Under is even money. Rockies plus 1 up is minus 134. Marlins minus 1 up is plus 112. Um, tough one. Let's go Marlins run line minus 1 up at plus 112. Brewers Reds. Adrian Hauser and Sonny Gray. Reds are minus 138. The Brewers are plus 118. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 115, under is minus 105. Brewers plus 1F is minus 72. Reds minus 1F is plus 142. I like how the Brewers are playing lately. Plus 118, I'm taking them against the Reds. Astros, Red Sox from Fenway. So these two teams meet up again. From Valdez and Martin Perez. Astros minus 126, Red Sox plus 108, over under 10. Over minus 106, under is minus 114. Astros minus 1F is plus 126. Red Sox plus 1F is minus 152. I'm going under 10, minus 114. That's way too high. Mariners, Tigers. Marco Gonzalez and Matt Boyd. Tigers minus 116. Mariners minus 102. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 108. Under is minus 112. Seattle minus 1F is plus 162. Tigers plus 1F is minus 196. I'm going over 8, minus 108. That on um, these two pitchers are not very good. Nats Rays on Fox Sports 1. John Lester, Tyler Glasnow. Rays are minus 210. Nats are plus 176. Over on their 7. Minus 110 each way. Nationals plus 1.5 is minus 125. Rays minus 1.5 is plus 104. Going over 7, minus 110. That is too low. And John Lester's not John Lester from the Cubs. Giants Rangers at 8 o'clock. Alex Wood and Jordan Lyles. If I'm not mistaken, these two teams played... Earlier in the year. Giants minus 134. Rangers plus 114. Over under 8. Over minus 114. Under minus 106. Giants minus 1F is plus 132. Rangers plus 1F is minus 160. I'm going over 8. Minus 114. Alex Cobb has fallen off a little bit lately. Yankees twins. Jordan Montgomery and Michael Pineda. God, the Yankees are under so much pressure here. 
to ride the ship. They're minus 120. Twins are plus 102 over on their line. Minus 110 each way. Yankees minus 1 half is plus 138. Twins plus 1 half is minus 166. I'm going under 9. Um, I think this could be a good matchup for Jordan Montgomery at target field. And I think that the Yankee bats are going to wake up a little bit. I, I would parlay the Yankees in the under. And I think that going against a former Yankee brings the best out of them sometimes. So Michael Pineda and the Yank and the, the Twins, who have underachieved just as much as the Yankees, if not worse. I You could argue even worse because they're under 500. At least the Yankees are a couple over. That's because they had a hot run a little bit. So that said, under nine's the play here. Um, Blue Jays, White Sox. Robbie Ray and Carlos Rodon. White Sox minus... 152, or Blue Jays plus 128, over on their 8, minus 110 HY. Blue Jays plus 1 half is minus 156. White Sox minus 1 half is plus 130. I'm going to take under 8. I don't feel super about it. I'm going to say Rodon pitches great. Ray pitches serviceably well. 815 Indians, Cardinals. Shane Bieber and Carlos Martinez. Indians minus 164. Cardinals plus 138, over on their 7. Over minus 120, under minus 102. Indians, minus one half is even money. Cardinals, plus one half is minus 120. I'm going to take Indians run line, plus 120, minus one and a half. 930, Royals, Angels. Chris Bubik and Andrew Heaney. Angels, minus 154. Royals, plus 130, over under eight and a half. Overs, minus 108, unders, minus 112. Royals, plus one half is minus 160. Angels, minus one half is plus 130. I'm going Royals, plus 130 on the money line here. I don't know why they're a dog. Ten or I'm sorry, nine forty. Diamondbacks Athletics. Um, John DePlaner and Chris Bassett. And we'll skip to the ten o'clock game. That's my bad. A's minus two fifteen. Diamondbacks plus one eighty. Over under eight. Over is minus one fourteen. Under is minus one oh six. D backs plus one half is minus one eighteen. Oakland minus one half is minus one oh two. I'm going Oakland run line for this one. And at ten o'clock, ESPN plus Cubs Padres. Zach Davies and Danielson lament. Um, the stuff's not up on the on FanDuel yet, but if the total is anything higher than seven and a half, I'm going to pounce the under. So I think this is going to be a lower scoring game, unlike last night. All right, now we'll look ahead to the WNBA slate for tonight. Um. Two games, 7 o'clock on Twitter, the Lynx and the Mystics. Um, I think the Mystics got to get going here, so giving the Mystics. Then 10 o'clock, CBS Sports Network, Commissioner's Cup game, Wings and the Mercury. Um, the Mercury should win. They're better than the Wings. So quick WNBA there. Now we'll move on to, um, to tennis, the French Open. We will start going over the results from the men's side of the French Open here. So, without further ado, here we go. All right. Men's singles results from yesterday. Fourth round, Rafael Nadal, your three seed over 18 seeded, Janis Skinner in three sets. One seed, Novak Djokovic over Lorenzo Musetti in five sets and a walkover. Musetti had to withdraw. Ten seed, Diego Schwartzman over Jan Leonard Struff in three sets. And nine seed, Matteo Berrettini gets in via walkover because eight seed, Roger Federer had to drop out. The quarterfinals are today, or they begin today. Um, 10 o'clock, six-seeded Alexander Zverev and Alejandro Davidovich Fokina. Um, let's do a little fan duel here because it's the quarterfinals. Um, Zverev minus 1050. Uh, Fokina's plus 610. Um... Set betting, um, I'm going to lay the minus 115 with Zverev 3-0 for my pick here. And then 
Two seeded Daniel Mavedev against five seeded Stefano Sipias at three o'clock. This is going to be a great match. Sipias is minus 230. Mavedev is minus 190. Um, for my pick here, I'm going to go Mavedev plus 190. I think Mavedev wins in five. And Mavedev five is plus 550. And I like that. All right. Women's. Um, fourth round from yesterday. Eight seeded Agus Wojtek over Marta Kostiuk in two sets. Seventeen seeded Maria Sakaria over four seeded Sofia Kennan in two sets. Twenty four seeded Coco Goff over twenty five seeded Ons Jabor in two sets, and Barbora Krejcikova over Solane Stevens in two sets. And today, underway right now in the quarterfinals, Tamara Zinisek and Paula Badosa. I'm going to go with Paula Badosa in three here as my pick. And then coming up soon, you have 21 seated Elena Rabakina and 31 seated Anastasia Pavlikinkova. Um, that's going to get underway shortly. Rabakina is minus 144. Pavla is plus 122. I'm going to say Pavla in in 3. 2-1 two, two, Pavla plus 340 would be the pick there. So there you have it for tennis for today. And now I'm going to do news and notes. I'm doing news and notes early in the show because I want to do the activities later. Um, trying to be quick here at news and notes. Um. Big news this morning, um, unfortunate news, I should say. Um, former New York Giants head coach Jim Fossil dies at age 71 due to a heart attack. Um, thoughts and prayers to Fossil's family. Um, very sudden, and 71 still kind of young, so um, passes of a heart attack. And uh, like I said, thoughts and prayers to Fossil's family. He led the Giants to the Super Bowl. In the 2000 season. A highlight from last night was seeing Canadians GM Mark uh, Bergevin very riled up. And he was jumping up and down all excited because of uh, the big win. Bruce Cassidy calls out officiating with the ref's treatment of the Islanders. He says... They sell a narrative over there. It's more like the New York Saints. Ouch. Kevin Durant roasts a post-game question. Jared Greenberg asked him a question, and Kevin Durant just laughed it off. And Kevin Durant goes, is that a real question? Floyd Mayweather says he's a legal bank robber regarding to uh, his fight against Logan Paul. When it comes to legalized bank robbing, I'm the best. Mike Trout um, gives an update on his right calf strain. I'm happy with my progress so far. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Luka Doncic hints at extension offer. Mavs star smiles when asked. He plans to sign the Supermax this offseason. I think you know the answer. Hmm. Interesting. Damian Lillard not making head coaching demands as Portland's front office and ownership will run search while communicating with Lillard along the way. Chris stops Porzingis frustrated with role, and he feels more like an afterthought than a co-star as Doncic dominates the ball. And the spotlight. Well, here's the reality. Kristaps Porzingis isn't as good as we thought he was. We think, well, I think he was overhyped because he was on the Knicks and was their only good player there at one point. And the fact that he he went from getting booed at the number four overall pick and everyone thought he was overdrafted to becoming a rookie sensation. And... Now he's a co-star on a team that's supposed to be good and expectations are higher. I mean, I'm not saying Kristaps is a bust player, but 
He just hasn't lived up to expectations. And Porzingis thinks he's better than Doncic, which he's not. And speaking of the Knicks, Kristaps' old team, Tom Thibodeau beats out Monty Williams and Quinn Snyder for coach of the year after leading the Knicks to 41-31 and 31 season. Um, Well-deserved. I would have had a fit on this podcast that Tom Thibodeau didn't win the coach year. He flat-out deserved it over those two other guys. Monty Williams had Chris Paul and Quinn Snyder has Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. The Knicks' best player, Julius Randle, one most approved player, but was awful in the postseason and was exposed in the postseason to who he might really be. So, Tom Thibodeau, I know Coach Deere is a regular season award and the Knicks overachieved in the regular season. Congratulations to Tom Thibodeau on the most well-deserved award that there could be this season. Ex-Michigan State basketball player Keith Appling charged with first-degree murder and deadly shooting in Detroit. Yikes. 76ers fined for tampering as 76ers president Daryl Morey and the franchise have each been fined $75,000 for Morey's post regarding Steph Curry. The least surprising news, Aaron Rodgers to skip minicamp as the NFL MVP not expected to attend Packers mandatory minicamp that starts today. And who's expected? Devontae Adams, as he's expected to show up at minicamp this week, along with wide receivers who did not appear at OTAs. Julio Jones did not know he was on TV. Former Falcons wide receiver had no clue he was on TV when he made comments that led to his trade request becoming public. Interesting. And teams didn't want to pay for Julio, as the Patriots had... Never had serious interest in paying Julio Jones and Seahawks. Also did not want to pay huge money. Interesting. Chris Durate forgoes combine. The Oregon guard um, has declined his combine invite and could have been a first round pick. Interesting news there. Um, the New York Liberty resigned Rashonda Gray. As they bring back the Ford on a hardship contract and will be able to play Sunday against the Mercury. A name to look out for in the Major League Baseball trade deadline is David Peralta. His rival executives say David Peralta is among the players Arizona has made available ahead of the trade deadline. Nick Saban got a contract extension with the Alabama Crimson Tide through 2029. With the base salary of $8.4 million, that will increase each year of New Deal. Nick Saban should be making more than that. He's the best coach in college football, and he should be making a lot more than that. The Mets say that Jacob deGrom is substance-free, as the Mets players take to Twitter to immediately shoot down any questions of Jacob deGrom using foreign substances on baseball. A nice story here. Um... In terms of feel good. TJ Olsen, the son of Greg Olsen, had a heart transplant and made a video. He said, thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for praying with me. So hopefully um, Olsen gets well soon and TJ Olsen here I'm talking about. And um, I'm glad to see that... uh, he made that video. That really was heartwarming to see. And last one. Um, teams calling for Jack Geichel's initial trade conversations expected to increase closer to the NHL draft. So we're going to see if uh, the Saber star is actually on the move for real this time or not. Now I'm going to do my 2020 NFL redraft. Um, this was a fun thing to... Put together, we have not done a 2020 NFL redraft yet. We're going to be doing redrafts all week. Today, NFL, tomorrow, Major League Baseball, as well as a mock draft in Major League Baseball. Then we're going to be doing mock draft in NBA and a mock draft in the NHL as well this week, as well as um, redrafts of all those drafts. So, um, without further ado, here we go with the uh, NFL redraft. Number one, Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow. Was there any doubt? Um, franchise quarterback. You could argue Justin Herbert here. But I don't think the Bengals would do over on Joe Burrow yet just because he got injured. 
Number two, the Washington professional football team. Chase Young, known to over here as the Washington uh, professional football team, takes their stud pass rusher with the second overall pick. Three, Detroit, Tristan Wirfs. Um, Wirfs was awesome this past season for the Bucks, and he would help give, well, first it was Matt Stafford and Jared Goff some protection. For the New York Giants, Michael Unwewu. Un- 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 on um, wave new guard. Um, just a steal of a pick by the Patriots. He would have certainly helped the Giants. Five Miami Dolphins. Justin Herbert. Um, Tua versus Herbert. It's a slam dunk. Who's better right now? If Herbert was the quarterback on the Dolphins, that would be a popular like playoff pick. Although they're gonna be a popular pick in the for the playoffs coming in the next season too. Because people still think that two is so great. Number six, the Los Angeles Chargers. Justin Jefferson, wide receiver, LSU. Um, with Herbert off the board, um, in theory here, they still have Tyrod Taylor as a placeover. And Jefferson's just another great piece to have. Him and Keenan Allen together would be fun. Seven, Carolina Panthers, CD Lamb. They get a much-needed weapon. Um, he would probably become their number one guy. Number eight, Arizona Cardinals, Antoine Winfield Jr., a big piece of the championship team for the Bucks. Number nine, Jacksonville Jaguars, Tua Tagovailoa, so they take a shot here at Tua. Ten, Cleveland Browns, Raekwon Davis, um, a surprisingly talented linebacker for the Dolphins. Um, he would have fit well in the Browns. Number 11, New York Jets, Clyde edwards Hilaire. I know they... People don't like running backs in the first round, but Edward Tiller is a different kind of talent. 12, Las Vegas Raiders. Chase Claypool. Um, Claypool was a really good rookie for the Steelers. Um, he would have been fine on Vegas. 13, San Francisco 49ers. Derek Brown. Um, Derek Brown was on and off throughout his rookie season. He made the all-rookie team. He certainly had a better year than Javon Kinlaw in my mind. Number 14, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Xavier McKinney. So uh, McKinney is the pick here. Um, He's somebody that came um, back in the second half of the year from his injury as a rookie and played well for the Giants. 15, the Denver Broncos, Mekhi Becton. So they improved their offensive line here. 16, Atlanta Falcons, Jonathan Taylor. So they keep the uh, win-now trend by... uh, Keeping Matt Ryan happy. Number 17, the Dallas Cowboys. Lajarius Sneed. Um, what a steal of a pick for the Chiefs in their secondary. He would have helped the Cowboys. Number 18, the Miami Dolphins. Jedrick Wills. He would have been a good fit for that team. He, he really had a nice year for the Browns as a rookie. Number 19, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, Carmen Dantzler. Um, the Raiders, to me, really need defense. And, um, he really would have been a big help for them. Number 20, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jerry Judy. That would have been a really good pick for them. Um... He had a nice year in um, Denver as a rookie, despite a lot of drops. 21, Philadelphia Eagles. LaVisca Chanel, very promising rookie for the Jags last year. 22, Minnesota Vikings. Jeremy Chin, a surprisingly good rookie defensive back for the Panthers. 23, New England Patriots. T. Higgins. Um, the Patriots, obviously... Um, Need receivers, so um, this would have been a fine pick. 24, New Orleans Saints. Kenneth Murray. Um, Chargers trade up for him. Um, Kenneth Murray had a nice rookie year. 25, uh, Minnesota Vikings. Henry Ruggs. So Ruggs falls to 25. As this is their consolation prize for losing out on Jefferson. 26, Miami Dolphins. Damian Lewis. Their offensive line was terrible. So they 
literally rebuilt that offensive line. So coming away with a, an interior lineman, an exterior lineman, and Justin Herbert in this free draft is pretty good for Miami. 27, Seattle Seahawks, Patrick Queen. His numbers on pro football, football, pro football focus were not good, but the eye test told other stories with his playmaking abilities. 27, the Baltimore Ravens, Alex Highsmith, defensive end. Um, very good find for the Steelers in the third round. Um, he would have fit on the Ravens, too, with all like the free agent losses they've had. 29, the Tennessee Titans, Carmen Curl, a very uh, surprising rookie safety for Washington. A surprising rookie safety for uh, the Redskins, or I'm sorry, the professional football team this past year. 30 to Green Bay Packers, Javon Kinlaw. So Kinlaw falls from 14 to 30 here. Um, he would have been a nice player in the middle of their interior of their defensive line for the Packers. 31, the San Francisco 49ers, Brandon Ayuk. They uh, take the same guy, except they don't trade up. And number 32, Kansas City Chiefs, Antonio Gibson. Um, with Edwards Light off the board, they go with Gibson, who I think would have been a nice fit in this Chiefs offense. All right, so that was a fun but quick little redraft. Now I want to talk election in terms of primaries for governors. Um, New Jersey and Virginia are going today. Um, we'll start with my home state of New Jersey. Um, Governor Phil Mil- well, Murphy obviously will be the uh, the Democrat nominee, presumptive. I think he's going to win. I think it's a no-brainer that, uh, that Murphy... Will win. Um, the Democrat side, unless there's a random write-in, and then Republican side, there's four: Jack Chatterelli, Brian Levine, Phil Rizzo, and Hirsch Singh. All right, so Chatterelli, former member of the NJ General Assembly from the 16th district, and was a candidate for governor in 2017. Um. Brian Levine, former Somerset County freeholder and former mayor of Franklin Township um, and was a candidate for governor in 2009. So he was in the primaries against Christie. Um, Having mayor experience certainly helps Levine's case. Phil Rizzo is a pastor. Um, He's somebody that... um, really has shown some promise in his uh, debates and whatnot. And last but not least, we got Hirsch Singh, a businessman, engineer, and panel candidate. Rizzo and Singh are two guys that... um. I mean, Rizzo more so than Singh um, don't really have, like, that experience from their past. So, although Singh has ran in the past, I think it's either going to be Chatterelli or Levine that wins. Um, I think Levine's case is that he was a mayor before in a very populated town, Franklin Township in Somerset County. And the case for a... Chatterelli is somebody that's been very, very open, ran a couple years ago. Being a part of the 16th District certainly helps his cause. I think Chatterelli's going to win. I think he's done a good job promoting. Um, Levine really hasn't done much in terms of promoting. Rizzo has. I think Rizzo and even uh, Singh to some degree have done a better job promoting than Levine. Although I, th- I do think Somerset County will have Levine's back especially Franklin Township. So I think it's going to be Chatterelli. I think Levine will come in second. I'm going to say Singh third and Rizzo fourth. And then Virginia. Um, So theirs is pretty much for the Democratic Party. Glenn Youngking, their current governor, will be running. And then there's 
five candidates for uh, Virginia. Jennifer Carroll Foy, the former state delegate for Virginia's second house of delegate district. Lee J. Carter, the state delegate for Virginia's 50th house of delegate district. Justin Fairfax, the lieutenant governor of Virginia. Terry McAuliffe, the former governor of Virginia from 2014 to 2018 and the former chair of the Democratic National Committee from 01 to 05. And Jennifer McClellan, state senator for Virginia's 9th Senate District and former delegate for Virginia's 71st House of Delegate District. Um, I think McAuliffe's going to win here. Um, He was an ex-governor of Virginia, ironically enough, and um, despite only having one term here. So I'm going to say McAuliffe wins Virginia. And then we're going to revisit this conversation tomorrow regarding who wins. And then on the 22nd is New York City mayor primary. So that's going to be a really, really interesting one to follow for sure. All righty. Now I'm going to do masked singer slash dancer fame rankings. This is something I always wanted to do on the podcast. So I made a list from... Eight, I want to say it's 85 to 1, 86 to 1 in terms of fame rankings. So without further ado, here we go. 86, Dr. Elvis Francois. Um, he just became famous during COVID because um, he was a doctor that sang really, really good music and was on the quarantine show for The Masked Singer Um as uh, season three was airing during COVID. Not many people know who he is. 85, Victor Oladipo. Um, a NBA star that's never stayed healthy. Not many people know who Victor Oladipo is. Only the hardcore NBA fans know who he is. And he, even the casual fan know, does know too. 84, Jackie Avancho. Um, obviously season four, um, or season three, my, my bad. Dr. Elvis was on season four, but season three during the quarantine show. Victor Oladipo, season two. Jackie Vancho, season three. She on America's Got Talent. Obviously, Nick Cannon hosted that show, so that was just a Nick Cannon play. Um, actually, there should be 87 on this list. I just forgot to put somebody down. So... I just have to figure out something here live on the show here. So I apologize for that slight adjustment. So now 87, Dr. Elvis Francois. 86, Victor Oladipo. 85, Jan- Jackie Ivanko. 84, Chloe Kim. Um, She was on season four as the jellyfish. I thought this was Joey King. Convinced it was Joey King, but it was Chloe Kim. And obviously she is a uh, skateboarder and was a nominee for Breakthrough Athlete at the ESPYs a couple of years ago. 83, Antonio Brown. Um, at the time he was on the Steelers, he was the very first unmasking in the show's history. So he has a little bit of history behind him. And obviously at the time he was on the Steelers. Um, 82, Barry Zito. Um Barry Zito, former San Francisco Giants and Oakland Athletics pitcher. His wife's a reality star, so he's somewhat popular. 81, Oscar De La Hoya, masked dancer. Um, De La Hoya was a popular boxer back in his day in his prime. And by the way, Barry Zito is season three. 80, Mark Sanchez. He was on season four as the um, um Baby alien, and that was a huge shocker, in my opinion. 79, Johnny Weir. He was the first unmasked in season two. Um, Obviously, former professional ice skater and now Olympic commentator. 78, Lonzo Ball. Um, Obviously, uh, Pelicans point guard and reality TV star. I think the reality TV thing is what gave him a big bump. And the fact that his father's a lunatic and... um, his brother also plays in the NBA. 77, Tony Hawk. Um, he was on season three. Um, Tony Hawk is somebody that um, obviously was popular a long time ago and 
had a lot of video games and obviously a professional a skateboarder. Number tw- uh, 76, Tyler Blevins, a.k.a. Ninja. He was the second unmasked in Season 2 as the Ice Cream, popular YouTuber. 75, Layla Ali, the daughter of Muhammad Ali. Um, That was really cool to see. She was on Season 2. And obviously, she boxes too. 74, Terry Bradshaw, um, former Steeler, quarterback, and current NFL on Fox analyst for the pre- and post-game. 73, Rob Gronkowski. He's the highest athlete on this list so far because he's Gronk. Played with Tom Brady his whole life um, and was in the media the year he took off. Number 72, Rumor Willis, the daughter of Bruce Willis. Um, So that's probably what gives her fame. She was the Lion in Season 1. Gronk was obviously White Tiger in Season 3. Terry Bradshaw was the Deer in Season 1. Layla Ali, the um, Panda in Season 2. Number 71, Kelly Osbourne. She was in Season 2. This came to a stunning haul when she got unmasked. Her mom was a guest panelist. I want to say it was last season or the season before. I should say last year. So season four. 70, Gabby Douglas. She was cotton candy on the masked dancer. She deserved to win it. She was fabulous. 69, Jordan Woods. She was the kangaroo in season three, obviously. Keep in keeping up with the car. Dashians for the longest time. 68, Mike Sorrentino of the Jersey Shore. He was Masked Dancer Season 1 as the Hammerhead. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, Vinny Guadino. I keep thinking that that was the situation in there. So, uh, so Vinny from the Jersey Shore. Guadino. I had Mike Sorrentino written down. My apologies, guys. But the, all those Jersey Shore boys... We're uh are still big. Sixty seven, Elizabeth Smart, current um ABC news anchor and participant. Obviously we all know her story, how she was kidnapped as a little girl. Number sixty six, Max Chermikovsky, also masked dancer. By the way, Elizabeth Smart Elizabeth Smart was the uh Miss Moth on Masked Dancer. Max of Dancing with the Stars was the sloth on Max Dancer. He was really good. 65, Ricky Lake. She was the Raven in Season 1. Um, Ricky Lake show. She was in Hairspray. 64, Wendy Williams. Another talk show. She was on The View for a little bit. She was Lips in Season 4, and she was awful. 23, Tommy Chong. He was the um, pineapple... In season one. And was the second. In the show's history to be unmasked. 62. Tori Spelling. A popular actress. Um, she was. The unicorn in season one. She was. Um, she had moments on The Masked Singer. That was the first. Correct guess. For Chet Ken Jung. She was on season one. 61. Margaret Cho. Also on season one. She was the poodle. And that was when. Ken Jung was infamously wrong. About his co-star. 60. Anna Gasteyer. Um, actress and Broadway star. She was the tree in season 2. 59. Paul Schaefer. He was the skeleton in season 2. 58. Logan Paul. He was on this past season. He was Grandpa Monster. Popular boxer. So that's our highest athlete so far. 57. Bella Thorne. Um. Popular actress, she was the swan, the white swan, in season three. 56, Jojo Siwa, former dance mom star and current pop star. Um, she was the T-Rex in season three. 55, Candy Burris, um, season three winner as the Night Angel. I don't think she should have won, to be honest. Obviously, um, Real Housewives of New Jersey star. Or not New Jersey, but the... Real Housewives star. 54 on threes. Country singer. Has a couple good hit songs. He was astronaut in season three. 53, Aloe Block. He was the marshmallow in season four. Obviously, a couple 
of hit songs, most notably um, doing the vocals of Wake Me Up by Avicii. 52 Adrian by Lone and 51 Raven Simone, both of the Cheetah Girls. Both were in season two, respectively. Simone was the Black Widow by Lone, the Flamingo. 50, LaToya Jackson. She was season one as the alien. 49, Lisa Hartman. Her and her husband, Clint Black, were the snow owls, but Black's higher on the list. I had to break him up. Because they're not a band or anything like that. They're just husband and wife. 48, Tamara Mowry. Um, obviously the seashell this past season. 47, Drew Pinsky. He was the eagle in season two, and everybody thought it was Howard Stern. 46, Sherry Shepard. Um, she was the, um, the penguin in season two. 45, Tom Bergeron, the taco in season three. 44, Sarah Palin, the bear in season three. 43, Tori Kelly. She was the seahorse in season four. 42, Bow Wow, the frog in season three. 41, Brian Austin Green. He was the um, giraffe in season four. 40, Hanson. They were the Russian dolls this past season. 39, Mark McGrath, Orca this past season. 38, JoJo, the other JoJo. She was the uh, Black Swan this past season. 37, Drew Carey. Um, he was the llama in season three. Obviously, the host of, of The Price is Right. He's known for saying, come on down. 36, Michelle Williams. She was the butterfly in season two, obviously Destiny's Child. Thirty-five was Wiz Khalifa. He was the um, chameleon this past year or this past season. Obviously, famously known for his song "Black and Yellow." Black and Yellow. Thirty-four, T Pain, the winner of season one as the monster. Um, thirty-three, Joey Fatone, the rabbit. Um. Obviously, uh, New Kids on the Block. 32, Jesse McCartney was the turtle in season three. Should have won. 31, Wayne Brady, the season two winner. Obviously, the Fox has a couple of game shows. Um, hosted Whose Line Is It Anyway, among other things. 30, Nick Cannon, the Bulldog. Obviously, the current host of The Masked Singer. Couldn't forget him. 29, Jordan Sparks, um, obviously um, season five winner of American Idol. She was on The Masked Dancer as the exotic bird. 29, Chris Daughtry, season two runner-up as the Rottweiler. He should have won it, in my opinion. Um, 27, Omarion, fourth place in this past season as the Yeti. B2K member. 26, Lil Wayne. First one I'm asked in season three is the robot. That was probably my uh, most obvious one as soon as he started singing. I'll never forget him singing that Lenny Kravitz song. 25, Tyrese Gibson. Obviously was Robo Pine this past year. 24, Nick Lachey, the winner of this past season as the Piglet. 23, Donnie Osmond, the third place finisher in I'm sorry second place finisher in season one as the peacock 22 Clint Black obviously him and his wife Lisa Hartman were the snow owls Clint Black was really um really big in the 90s 21 Donnie Wahlberg obviously clue will do this past season the founder of new kids on the block and the husband of Jenny McCarthy now is the one I forgot. I had to put Donnie in there. He counts. If Nick Cannon counts as the Bulldog, then we got to count 
Donnie as uh, Clute will do. Tw- number 20, Paul Anka. He was the Broccoli in Season 4. Um, popular actor. Number 19, Bill Nye the Science Guy. He was the Ice Cube in Masked Dancer. 18, Mickey Rourke. Um, he obviously was Gremlin in Season 4. He famously unmasked himself. 17, Busta Rhymes. Um, first one unmasked in Season 4. Um, you knew right away that it was Busta because of his voice. He was the dragon. Um, number 16, Brian McKnight. He was the, um, he was on The Masked Dancer as... He was the cricket. And I thought he was an athlete, to be honest. But that was a big gap for the Masked franchise, Brian McKnight. Number 15, Ice T, the first unmasked on The Masked Dancer. Popular actress. As Ice T was the disco ball. Um, next up, um, number, I want to say 14. Yep, Caitlyn Jenner, the Phoenix, this past season on The Masked Singer. We all know Caitlyn's story, so that's a pretty big get. 13, Taylor Dane, season 4, Popcorn, big time 80s singer. 12, Brett Michaels, he was the banana in season 3, obviously you know him from Poison. 11, Seal, he was... The Leopard in Season 2, he was just fabulous. And uh, he was a big singer in the 90s. Number 10, Gladys Knight. She was the B in Season 1, third place finisher. Number 9, Dionne Warwick. She was the mouse in Season 3. Number 8, Leanne Rhymes. She was the winner of Season 4 as the sun. Number 7, Danny Trejo. Popular actress. She was the raccoon this past season. Number 6, Nick Carter. Um, he was Crocodile in Season 4, the runner-up to Leanne Rhymes as the son. 5, Chaka Khan. She was Miss Monster in Season 3. Number 4, Patti LaBelle. She was the flower in Season 2. Number 3, Bob Saget. He was Squiggly Monster in Season 4. Number 2, Bobby Brown. He was the crab this past season. That was a wildly big get for the show. And number 1, of course... Kermit the Frog. It's got to be Kermit the Frog. I'm sorry. Everyone knows who Kermit the Frog is. This was their most famous cat, and obviously he was the first to go on this past season. As Jenny said, even though he was the first to go, he's one that we'll never forget. And then Ken Jung said it was the biggest get the show's ever had. I agree with Ken about that. Kermit should have gone further. Danny Trejo should have went in the first episode. And even if they unmasked Danny Trejo in the first episode, still would have been a big first get of the season or first unmasking of the season if it were to be da- if it was Danny Trejo instead of um, Kermit, and we had to wait a couple weeks for Kermit. But yeah, Kermit was really uh, special to see on the Masked Singer, and certainly unexpected as well. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. Um, this was a tougher one to project and pick than the past couple. Um, so my best bet pick will be in Major League Baseball. And I'm going to go with a total here. I'm going to go over 9 in the Mets-Orioles game. That is a very, very um, ludicrous number. I know you have to pay a little bit. I did it. I paid a little bit over 9 Mets-Orioles for best bet of the day. All right, so there you have it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping 
everything in the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs, Major League Baseball, WNBA, French Open. We'll go over the primaries in New Jersey and Virginia. Um, tomorrow's Major League Baseball Day. We'll do the 2020 redraft. Then we'll also do um, my first mock draft as well for Major League Baseball. And obviously, best bet in news and notes as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.